All right. So here's the main one for today. Oh, did you request this one, Evan? It must be yours then. I'm sorry, I didn't know that off the top of my head. I've got a, a long list I'm working through. Well, you get to be the main event today then. And we've got some fun ones coming up. Um, a couple of different Princess Leia's. A couple of different Han, uh, Han Solo and Chewie's and uh, Luke and Yoda's and gosh, I was looking through the list today and it's a little overwhelming, but it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And like I was saying yesterday, I hope to see my own style evolve as we do these together and get a little more loose and um, bring a little bit more of my poster style to some of these because uh, I kind of feel like my traditional art style is I just kind of look at the reference, look at what the thing is and draw it. And so the style is a little inconsistent from piece to piece, but I'm working on it, that's for sure. It's, uh, it's good to have goals. So, you know, Hera's got these, like, uh, little decoration or markings or pattern, whatever you want to call it. So this will be a challenge because I'll probably just do those in pencil and then we'll let the marker butt up against them and then that should give us some really nice shading. Now, this is a little more complicated than Lion-O, so we'll take our time with this. So it won't move as fast, but the main event ones here usually don't. We want to be precise if we can. But at the same time, we'll just go with the flow as much as possible. Um, so here I've kind of just got some shading lines indicated where I want like my super dark value is sort of going to be this in this area. And then I'll do a, a medium value out here. So that'll give the, the shape that we're looking for, hopefully. And there's so many fun poses to do with her, but I really like the action-y kind of gun poses. So. I try to look at a few of those and kind of take inspiration from that and blend them together into one final. I have to keep this pencil sharp. One of the things I like about this character is the way that the goggles and the sort of the head pieces work. Um, it's just such a good design, you know. I mean, it helps that the scripts and the voice acting is good, and that endures, endears you to the character too. But just the design itself is so nice. And so again, I'll have some like kind of darker shading down here, and then some like a lighter shading up here. But let's just focus on the uh, the perimeter of the contour, whatever we want to call it today. All right. Well, I guess we know what one of your favorite Rebels characters is. I I'd be honest, I. I watched all of those episodes when they were out originally, but it's been so long. I need to just go back and, and just rewatch the whole series and get it all fresh in my head again. thing about these characters is just how everything kind of flows together 
got such like a nice organic feel about them. So we get down here, we'll see it in the markers, but I really want to let the light and shadow carry some of the load here because we're going to have so much black um, on her face and head that this lighter area of her costume will let it really breathe. And that, that contrast will be key. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about, about, about trying to do flowing strokes. And not pet the line, you know. You see, you don't want to do the like scratch, scratch, scratch kind of thing. All right. I try not to spin the paper too much, but sometimes with these big curves, it's really the only way to make them look right. As so we get down here again, we've got just a little bit of her pattern will be visible through the shadows. Kind of let the shadows die right about there. That's the plan at least. I was thinking about having some music playing while I draw, and then another uh, Twitch streamer told me to be careful because then when I try to replay the videos on YouTube, they'll get blocked if there's like copyrighted music, which makes sense. So I was starting to look into the different like uh, public domain and royalty-free options. So. Hopefully maybe next week. We got our light upgrade this week, so maybe next week I'll figure out how to get a little bit of background music going so that even when I'm not talking your ear off, you've got something to listen to. Apparently I can play pretty much anything I want while I stream, but they'll just block it afterwards after the live stream. So. We don't want that. We want people to be able to you know, come back and watch these here and, and on YouTube and whatever else we decide to do with them. Uh, let's see here. What do I do there? kind of crazy how thin her eyebrows are it definitely reflects like the time period that this stuff was made originally you know if it was today they'd be thicker eyebrows I think that thick old fashioned you know Eye details looking really nice if I can. I always feel like the eyes are some of the most important aspects of any drawing, and it really kind of makes it or breaks it sometimes. things if we can get the eyes and the 
eyebrow and eyelashes looking good and penciled and it's, it's going to look great when it's all inked. So it's worth the time to spend on it right now. So while we're doing this, let me know uh, what's going on with you. If anything exciting happened uh, during your quarantine time today. I know uh, yesterday I was complaining about missing the mail. I finally, finally got the mail out today. I think we must have had like a substitute mail carrier the last couple of days because our normal mail carrier always comes between one and two, like clockwork. In the last couple of days, I missed the mail, and luckily today I, I took it out early, and it came between one and two, so it all worked out. Oh, thanks for the nice work on the, the NASA art, or the nice words on the NASA artwork. I need to do more there. Everyone at NASA has been so friendly and nice to me. And whenever I go down to Orlando, usually several of them come out. I haven't got a chance to to go to their offices yet. It was, it was nice, they offered it. Um, but yeah, I really, I've always been a fan of space program and you know, I grew up during the space shuttle era and it was such a big deal. And I think my father grew up during the Apollo era and he would just tell me stories. And um, So yeah, I just, it's always meant something to me and I have fun with those. You know, I kind of, in a perfect world, I'll do like one travel poster one month and then a space illustration the next month and um, that's been a little interrupted right now, but you know, I did that coronavirus wash your hands poster this time instead, but I'm giving that one away free. So it doesn't help me really, but it was fun to do and hopefully it'll help some other people. All right, so we've got the face roughed in. Um, I'll probably just lightly go over some of these shading lines, but mostly I just plan to add in some marker so I don't want them to be too, too dark. Just enough that I can see them. I just have to remember not to ink some of these lines. Don't want any oopsie mistakes. Oh, that's what I want to do. I want to have like a cast shadow coming off of this goggle, I think. Maybe like a little bit under here, under the strap, and then maybe that line. Yeah, maybe just let it come down. Something like that. That'll look good. We can just hint at it over here so it bleeds into that shadow. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> yes, happy accident. Sometimes. I'm glad you have your whole family at home right now and that you enjoy it. I know not everyone is enjoying having their whole families at home. It definitely separates uh, the families with like strong bonds versus some of the others. I don't watch a lot of daytime television, but I saw some news story where one of those daytime talk hosts was saying that it's like, you know, her and her husband and everybody's home right now and we're on day whatever and finally like she's not even talking to one of her daughters or something and I thought, oh, the drama. All right, 
So hopefully you can see how this is starting to turn out. Uh, should probably well, let's work this direction. So this will be mostly markers here. And we'll do like a little reversed outline here, maybe like a baby reversed outline there. That'll start to tell us what's going on with the arm. And this will be our main shadow line. And then just a hint right there. So Desidious is your uh, daughter joining us today. Is, this, uh, is she a fan of Rebels? Or did we already lose you? Yesterday we had, I think, the most people we've had on stream during like the last 10 minutes. It was really strange. It makes me wonder if I should go later in the day. But um, I'm learning about all of Twitch's little ins and outs and One of their things is you have to have like five people chatting on your stream at the same time to sort of like level up. And I think we had four at the same time yesterday. We had like more overall, but we had four at the same time. So we were like, just missed it the next, the next level up. So I was like, oh, it'll happen eventually. So I'm going to have her finger be in a lot of shadow here, but I'm going to have like the trigger of the gun be super light right there. So hopefully when it's all shaded in, we can see it. <laughs> she was looking up who Lionel was, huh? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was saying earlier, I didn't, I didn't see the new Thundercats that they had on like Netflix or something a year or two ago. But uh, original, I remember. I don't remember watching it faithfully, but I remember seeing it. So I don't know if it was on at a weird time where I lived, or maybe there was some other show that played against it that I watched more often, but I do remember seeing it. I think for me it was like, I think before school was like He-Man and um, oh, whatever we called Macross here. And um, Like G Force and Speed Racer and stuff like that, and then like after school was GI Joe and Jim and the Holograms and Heathcliff. <laughs> yeah, Tracy. Thanks for getting on the chat and not just being a creeper. I appreciate that. Uh, let us, so I don't know if you saw Lion-O or not, but now we're on Hera from Star Wars Rebels. So if you have a favorite Rebels character or just a favorite Star Wars character, let me know. And thanks for joining the chat. Appreciate it. Okay, so we've got We've got Hera mostly penciled out here, and you can see, like, I just left so many of these big open spaces where I'm just going to go in and, and fill with black. And as usual, that'll make it look cool. So, with the pencils done, we can go to our brush pen and start adding some detail here. Yes, Tracy, I appreciate you helping me get the points. So, what do we have, like, three real-time people? We're only, like, two away from 
from unlocking some mystical magic. Yay, thank you, Tracy. All right, so let's see if we can make this somewhat smooth and steady here. This is one big, long line. So it might take a few movements to get it here. We better not see Evan jump off in the middle of this sketch either. I'm trying not to be too heavy handed with this brush pen on this outer edge. And that way when we do the darker inside edges it'll it'll be even more more bold. trick with these is to stop where her little pattern comes through. Otherwise it won't look right later. All right. <laughs> Hi Dirty Soul, thanks for uh, joining the chat. We appreciate it. If you have a favorite Star Wars character or Star Wars Rebels character, let me know. Or if you have any questions about the artwork or the techniques or anything, or if you just want to chat with Tracy, that's okay too. <laughs> so at this stage, I'm just taking the, the brush pen and just doing sort of like the basic perimeter ink. Uh, and then once that's done, we can bust out the markers and start doing some of the shading. And we'll just tighten everything up as we go, just a little bit at a time. This is sort of the main event sketch today, so it's the one where I sort of take my time and put in the most detail. And then we've got a cool down sketch after this that's going to be, uh, I think, another Pokemon sketch. So. Uh, the person who wanted the Pokemon sketch from yesterday actually ordered two, so this will be the second of their sketches. I just want his ear cup to be a little bit more round, like that. There we go. You miss Saturday morning cartoons, Tracy? Yeah, I do too. I, uh, I mean, I guess it's great that everything's on demand right now, but like you, I miss there being like something to look forward to on certain days. Uh, I guess Disney Plus has sort of been doing that with The Mandalorian, but I do miss that. I was thinking with this coronavirus sort of lockdown time we're in, I was like, if there was ever a time for like regular broadcast television to make a move and do something bold and have a comeback. This this would be it if they were smart enough. What was your favorite uh, Saturday morning cartoon? All of you. And you can have more than one. It's allowed. Just trying to think about my favorite. You know, I mean, obviously it changed year to year, but I was like addicted to that Disney's Gummy Bears cartoon. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed that. It's just a lot of fun. And there was like, there was crazy cartoons. There was like stuff like Turbo Team. Like a kid who turned into a car. I mean, who thought of that? That's just crazy. And it looked painful. <laughs> oh yeah, Dungeons and Dragons and Transformers. Those are both good.
think Transformers was the one I couldn't think of earlier. And I was like, I know there was a another one I would watch like every day after school. I'm pretty sure it was like G.I. Joe, Jim and the Holograms, and Transformers were all like back to back. I got to work with Christy Marks, who wrote most of or many of the G.I. Joe and Jim episodes. We worked on a comic book together and She's a blast. She had all kinds of crazy good stories about, about both of those series. Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah, that was so big. I don't know, did you see the... Um, Netflix the toys that made us episode about Power Rangers it was pretty cool I mean obviously I mean I knew it was Japanese shows remade for American audience but I didn't realize how many different Japanese shows it was that they like cut up and put together to make one new show to look like a half moon almost. There we go. Nice. Okay. Decidious and Evan, which um which Power Rangers would either of you be? Oh, and Tracy, were you at uh, Phoenix Con when all that stuff went down with the Green Power Ranger? Were you here? I don't want to say it out loud, but um, you can say it in the chat what happened. Definitely crazy. So I'm trying to take my time with these face details. Just make sure they look extra special good. Because now it's really the only time I have to sort of tighten them up. We have four people in the chat. Are we just like one short? I know there's lurkers out there. Join us on the chat. Join our party. Oh, Ninja Turtles. Man, talk about something that's lasted a long time. Turtle power. Kevin Eastman was always super nice to me. I think I met him the first time when I was like 19 or something. And, you know, here's like one of the wealthiest, most successful guys in the business and he's nothing but nice. My plan is to not draw in some of these lines and just let the highlights carry this since there's going to be so much dark shadow up here and down here. So hopefully that plan will work out. We'll see. But it's fun to experiment no matter what. Thanks for sharing the story on the chat, Tracy. Appreciate it. I don't want to 
give any any power to anybody by talking about it out loud. It probably doesn't matter, but I have a lot of friends at Phoenix Con, so why tempt it? So this shoulder armor, we're gonna be getting back into some of the darker area here, so I can be a little more heavy-handed with that. And again, I'm gonna want like a reversed outline here. Something like that. Yeah, right? I think, I think we need to moderate Tracy to be our chat moderator. You've been nominated. phase is done, which will be soonish. Bust out the markers and start doing some shading. But I think this is going to look pretty cool, especially once we get all the black shadow on there. Yeah, right? It's like he had it on his like to-do list. Pinky, try to take over the world. That's a cartoon we all forgot about. It was Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain. How good was that? All right, we decided on the last sketch that this brush pen does not like the ruler. So I'm going to freehand these straight lines and if they end up not being straight, we'll just say that they have character and gesture and flow instead of being straight. More of those happy accidents. Oh, okay. You've been watching, are you, did you watch an episode of Animaniacs or are you rewatching like the series? Because if you're rewatching the series, let me know where that's on. Where that's on. I have to check that out. It's been a long time. Definitely go back and rewatch Animaniacs and especially all the episodes with Pinky and the Brain. Oh, it's on Hulu. Well, I should be watching it then because we get that free with Disney Plus. So now I have a reason to fire up Hulu. So we almost have the ink outline done here. Yeah, 
pretty much. So now we can start filling in the black shadows with our markers and uh, take it from looking like nothing to something. Which is always the challenge. <laughs> you made your mom watch Animaniacs? Well, you know, some parents just never understand. It's a great show. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like it's one of those shows that you had to see when you were young to appreciate. But maybe I'm wrong. I think I saw the like that YouTube channel where, like kids react, and uh, they showed like you know five year olds Animaniacs, and it was weird how many of them liked it. But they said like, why does this cartoon look so weird? It doesn't look like a Pixar cartoon. And then you realize they'd never seen like 2D animation. You're like, why is it flat? You're like, I'll flatten you, you punk. Whippersnappers. So now I've got the marker out, and we're just gonna fill in all the like super dark black shadows on here. And uh, that will give us the contrast we need to then go and add some of the shading and stuff in. So a hint at just a hint of a reverse line right there. There we go. And this shadow will really help bring in some focus on the headphones here. <laughs> Maybe we are all weird. Maybe I don't know. It's a it's a different. Different time, different generation, something. I think any anybody who was a child before the smartphone just has a totally different experience than you know, a kid that was born after 2009. So what do you think, Evan? Is this uh, living up to your expectations so far? Or is it still too early to tell? Like, what's he doing? Why does that look like that? I hate it. Your kids don't like the cartoons you grew up on, huh? That's interesting. Because, I mean, I don't know, it's just a different time. I mean, so so much of what I watched was old reruns and, you know, Scooby-Doo and Bugs Bunny and all that. And I still thought it was entertaining, even though I... And Tom and Jerry, you know, I wasn't born in the 1940s or anything, but I still thought the cartoons were funny. I certainly appreciated the animation and the background paintings. Thank you, Evan. I'm glad you like it. This is sort of like the the flatting part, if you will, where you're just like zoned out, filling in all the black so that you can get to the next part. But it's definitely, this is the contrast that makes it all work. Because without this shadow, it would just kind of be flat and boring. Every generation thinks it's the ultimate time to be alive. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, I'm sure it has to do with the style of the art too. I mean, you know, if you grew up only seeing 3D cartoons and someone shows you a 2D cartoon, you're like, what's this? Plus there's just so much more choice now. I mean, when I was a kid, you pretty much had to watch the reruns or whatever was on. There wasn't really a choice. Starting to get somewhere here. Top lip shadow. Yeah, I'll probably do that with a darker gray, but it'll definitely be there. Otherwise, that would make her lip look really funky if there was nothing. Hello Drexel, thanks for commenting, appreciate it. Yeah, I agree about the choices. I mean, like you said, you know, just a couple of channels, maybe if you had cable or something or VCR, but now I'm mean, just open some app and watch anything you want. Can you imagine being like a five-year-old right now? What an ultimate time to be a kid. All the streaming video in the world. Go back and watch all the Star Wars Rebels like every day. Kind of like when Frozen came out and everybody I knew they were going to strangle their kids because they were watching the movie over and over and over again. <laughs> Content overload. I don't know. Is, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I guess in our current quarantine, it's almost like you can't get enough content, right? Open up Netflix or Hulu every night and be like, do I want to watch that? Hey Drexel, thanks for joining us. If you've got um, any more comments or questions about the characters, the technique, don't hesitate to ask. And we'll definitely be adding some, some lip shadow, so to hang around, it'll happen. Kind of laying out all the black shadow right now, and then we'll get to some of our shading markers and start to put some more details in. When I do these sketch commissions, I try not to rush this part because I want the blacks to look like dense and nicely filled in and not streaky because every one of these sketches is for, you know, it's going to a new home. So I make sure it looks really nice if I can. <laughs> oh, I hadn't even thought about the streaming equivalent of channel hopping. Yeah, that could be really annoying. Especially if it's a five-year-old kid. Be like, do you have ADD or are you just annoying? I can't tell. I guess I can be like that with, with video streams sometimes, you know. Just trying to figure out if it's something you're into or not. But I don't really get the channel hopping though too much because that was originally just to like escape from ads and stuff, you know. <laughs> both. Why not both? So we're just about got all these big black shadows filled in. And then we'll 
grab our markers and start doing some cool shading. Get some different values going here. You have to watch Trolls 2 with the family. Well, thank you for joining us today, Desidious and your daughter. I uh, hope she liked this sketch. I know she's a fan. <laughs> Kids can watch five shows at once. Now, there's a skill that I would, I don't think I would be able to develop as an adult. <laughs> I have friends that would watch like multiple sports streams at the same time and I was like, no, I'm out. I can't do that. I'm definitely like a single track focused person, hence the artist. I definitely drive the multitaskers crazy. What are you going to do? Do you want to do on this one? Um, I think that's just about it for like the super dark black shading. So we can go and like start with like a light, a light value. I'm thinking maybe like a, maybe like a twenty percent gray, and then we'll try to work in some like medium, like a 40 or a 60 or something. All right. So here is our 20, 20% 20 warm gray. Start with that. And I think I'll just outline some of these details so that we don't accidentally go into them. That'll help. Your son can play Fortnite and watch YouTube at the same time. That would I would just be motion sick from that. That's all that would happen to me. I certainly couldn't win a game. Good for them. Good for those kids. Maybe they'll be better at everything than we are. All right, so I'm just gonna start adding some of this light value and then we'll just work in just every shade darker after that. Hopefully this one will start coming together. Well, we talked about cartoons, but what's everybody um watching right now during the, the quarantine time. Any kind of show or series I'm missing out on. I watched the first episode of some new fantasy thing on uh, Netflix last night. I can't remember the name of it. Like knights and swords and sorcery and stuff with the kid. It was, it was pretty good. It was better than, uh, better than I expected. And then of course Christy and I are still watching the the Miss Fisher mysteries. We're still in season two. That one's been pretty fun so far. All right, Evan, don't let me forget to come back and throw an ink line along the top of this before it's finished.
Star Trek Discovery. I keep getting, I keep hearing mixed things about that one. Half the people say they hate it, half say they love it. Is that still paid only on, on uh, CBS app or is it available somewhere else? Decision time. Let's see how the 40 looks. All right, well, that's the 50. So here's the 40. Oh, it's free for a month, or this month. Okay, I might check that out then. I don't know if you guys know Star Wars artist um, Randy Martinez or not, but he's been going through Disney Plus and watching all kinds of old movies and writing his new reviews online. So, like, uh, you know, a movie that he saw as a kid, like Pete's Dragon or something, and he loved, and then he'll go and write a new review based on, like, his adult self, what he thought of it. And they're kind of curmudgeonly and funny, so... Oh, so your wife likes it. Okay. Well, if it's free, I'll have to check it out. I feel like we've subscribed to so many streaming services. I hate to add another one, but if they're doing a free trial, why not? All right. Well, I think this is going to work through here pretty good. So I think we're on the right path with that. Give this a little bit of an edge shadow there. Yeah, I'm not hating that. All right, so this is the 40, so let's maybe take the 30 in there. Maybe it's like 30 and 50, so it's like a shade darker than uh, her skin. Let's start with the 50. Oh, thank you. Thanks for saying it looks nice. Right? I'm with you, Tracy. Yeah. All these streaming services were supposed to save us money. But by the time you've got Netflix and Disney Plus and, you know, whatever, Amazon Prime and something else, then it's like, it costs more than cable or the same or something. It's annoying, that's for sure. All right, so yeah, I'm just using the markers right now to just do some shading and some definition. I'm trying to keep it in my sort of like blocky postery style as much as possible at least with markers. <laughs> Yeah, HBO too. Yeah, we have HBO streaming because of uh, Westworld and some of the movies and things. Yeah, so that's another one to add to the list. Ah, they're just stealing money out of my pocket, I tell you. Gonna have to get like a 
a second job or a day job just to pay for television. sure about using that there yet. Uh, but yeah, we can do it for the headphones, I think. Showtime. Oh, I don't even I don't even know what's on Showtime. Is there actually something worth watching on Showtime? Shameless, huh? I don't I don't think I know that one. Alright, well don't get me addicted to something new. I can't afford it. Time wise or my wise. I gotta do my sketches. I can't I can't be watching television people. I gotta draw. It's coming together. Do just a little bit more shadow there. take our lighter value in here now and finish out the top of our little headgear before we go to the face. So this one was 50, so let's jump it down to like 30 for some contrast. That should work, hopefully. Don't want that dark, yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. I think going a little bit darker here will be good because that way the see the face better. I still might go one shade darker. I haven't decided yet. That's what we want right there. Magicians. I don't think I saw that one. We were watching um, October Faction. It's based on the IDW graphic novels. I think we watched the first two or three. It was actually pretty decent, but then I saw that it had not been renewed for a second season and for some reason that just made me like not care about the rest of the first season so we stopped watching it I'm thinking maybe they should have saved that announcement that it hadn't been renewed because it just kind of killed it So this value is going to do nice. It'll it'll frame in these goggles, but we might have to go back and darken in some of those shadows since I went darker for the highlight. But it'll be an additive process. Oh, Stump Town! I've heard really good things about that one. Really good things. I actually am surprised Christy's not watching it because she likes Colby Smolders. So you would think she would just want to watch it, but not yet. This is definitely going to work. So 
So what's Stumptown actually about? Since I clearly don't know. I kind of remember seeing a commercial or two, but that's all I remember. Are you talking about the October Fashion comic? Yeah, I mean, the story seemed good. I was surprised it was, um, I mean, it wasn't the best show, but I've certainly seen worse. It seemed to have like, I don't say a low budget, but it wasn't, it wasn't shot like a high budget show. A girl that's a PI. Okay. I mean, that sounds cool. I'm always down with mysteries. Definitely getting better contrast now with that. It's looking a lot better. So let's do some like medium light highlights on the goggles here. I think maybe the 20. Oh, he did stump town. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't know that Stumptown was based on a comic too. I guess I should have known like everything is based on a comic now. So like why wouldn't it be? Sorry for spinning the paper so much, guys. I try to stop myself from doing that. But it's such a habit I need to break. All right. Okay, so that's the 20. That's what we're gonna use for the light value of her skin. So that means we're gonna use the 40 for the darker value. So we'll go to the 40. right oh thank you thanks to both of you for saying that this is this is a fun one this was I've been looking forward to this one all day that's why I made it like the feature sketch is that really 40 it looks too dark to me that's what it says all right all right we'll run with it having to take this dark value here and bringing a little bit into the edge of her hat to break it up between the skin and the hat a little bit there. And then we'll go like a shade darker on the lip probably. I still read comics since I work in the industry. 
I'll just say not as much as I should. Um, I read the scripts for every issue that I work on, obviously. Um, but, it, and I do read them occasionally, but definitely not as much as I used to. And it's, I mean, it's not like I dislike them or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's like any, any career, any job. Sometimes at the end of the day, that's the last thing you want to think about. Not always, but sometimes. On the other hand, I will say that like, it hasn't ruined me for comics, you know, like, I think some careers, once you peek behind the curtain, it can like ruin you for that thing. Like I used to work in an ad agency and one of my first big gigs was the Nicoderm Nicorette product. And um, just sort of seeing behind the curtain at some of that stuff, it really turned me off and uh, made me not want to do it. So, and it's, I mean, I like the actual creative part of the job, but just the, the skeeziness of some of the medical stuff we were doing uh, just turned me off so you know in that case in that instance like it really working in that industry turned me off of the industry whereas in comics you know there's days I may not want to think about comics at the end of the day but it's uh, I still love doing it and I still love the industry so it's, uh, it's fun it definitely has its challenges, like anything else, I guess. But I think you you can only do this job if you are like super thick skinned, even if you're sensitive, like I am. Um, and I don't want to say have no ego, but are able to let that go pretty easily because. No matter how much we work on these things, they don't they don't belong to us. You know, some company owns it or some creator owns it, and, and even if you get to be associated with it, you can't ever really take that for granted. All right, so we're back to the twenty again, because basically, you know, the face is the same colors as that, so. Just doing it the same. And like I said, I think we've got some really nice contrast here. So once this face is done, we might just need to beef it up down here a little bit. Was I a graphic designer? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was an art director and then a creative director. Um, first at an ad agency and then like a, uh, oh, we'd call it internet startup now. But we, I kind of, I was at the creative director, so I I oversaw a team of creatives, and then I was the liaison between the creatives and the software engineers, the programmers. And my job was to get them to work together to build super interactive, nice looking websites. Because the programmers were really good at functionality and the designers were really good at design, but they weren't able to work together. So. The first thing I did is I brought them all into the same workspace and made them sit next to each other and talk to each other. Um, and then we got to work and we did some really cool stuff. Um, that company started firing up uh, or laying off a bunch of their middle management and I saw the writing on the wall and that's when I bailed to start Hi-Fi. And like a month later they sold to Sprint and uh, Sprint just absorbed them, and I think everybody that was there pretty much lost their jobs. So I'm glad I left when I did. But it was a great job, and it was a fun time. It was fun being on the front lines of the web in the early days. I mean, I got to help, you know, send in reports to Adobe to help create like the first versions of Dreamweaver and design websites for big companies and stuff. So it was, it was a good time. All right. Hey. Look at that. Starting to look like something. And I've worked at, you know, for magazines and book publishers and stuff while I was in college. So that's where I learned most of my print production skills. 
was newspaper magazine books. So when I got into comics, I already knew like how the colors were going to print and what happens after I'm done with the file, like the film and the print plates and all that stuff. And it makes a big difference. But now we're sort of losing a lot of that generation and there's just fewer and fewer people inside the industry who, who know that stuff. Uh, did Hi-Fi take off right away? Yes and no. I mean, we had a, an independent, I mean, I've been working in comics while, you know, having a full-time job before that, but just for independent stuff and create our own stuff. Um, so when we started Hi-Fi, we had like a client, like a small mid-size publisher out of New York. And um, they took a bunch of us out to um, San Diego Comic-Con and encouraged me to share my portfolio around and stuff. And so I did. And it was maybe like six months after that that I um, got a call on like the... Oh, five o'clock at night or something and I said uh, is this is this Brian Miller and I said yeah and so this is Rob Liefeld and I was like oh and so he asked if I could help you're gonna hear this story again in the class probably but um, <laughs> ask if I could help with some pages for uh, cable and it was a uh, issue where cable and Wolverine were fighting and I said sure and so he said, well, I'm going to send you five pages to color. And I said, great. When do you need them? He said, when I wake up in the morning. And I panicked, but I was not going to say no. So I said, yes. And this is back in the days of dial-up internet. So he sent me the files over AOL Instant Messenger, which took quite a long time. And I think I got them all. I've splatted them myself and colored them myself, and I got them all done at maybe like 2 a.m. and turned them in to Rob, and he got on the phone. I don't remember if I had to do changes or if they were good to go, but got them done. And I passed out, and I woke up to the phone ringing and answered the phone, and I said, is this, is this Brian Miller? Is this... I said, yeah. So this is the same Brian Miller who colored these five pages. And I'm thinking, what did I do wrong? What did I screw up? You know, I'm, I'm having a moment of panic. And uh, instead, they said, they said, no, we love these. And we want you to do more. And they said, as a matter of fact, we've got a, a pinup for this same issue that you just did these pages for, if you'd like to do it. And I said, great. When do you need them? And they said, tomorrow morning. So that's when I figured out how the comic book industry worked. And it's it, it's been pretty nonstop since then. I mean, there's ups and downs and starts and stops and feast and famine, but I've been pretty fortunate, I would say. Definitely no complaints. All right, let's go for her armor. I want kind of a darker mid-dark. Yeah, let's try this. Right, Tracy? AOL Instant Messenger. How did we ever, ever survive? I remember my first jobs for DC is back when DC was owned by AOL Time Warner. And DC did not have any digital capacity. You know, meanwhile, Hi-Fi had an FTP server that we've been using for years with Marvel and other clients and uh, so I told DC I said well how are we supposed to get files back and forth with you guys and they said oh well we're gonna put them on zip disk and send them via FedEx and I was like well that's ridiculous you can go on my server and just download them right now and they're like we don't do that and so I got them to try it and I think they used our server and shared files with us that way for years before they started like started their own server. It was kind of crazy. 
But sometimes these big companies are the slowest ones to adopt the new the new tech, you know. Yes, zip disk. I had stacks and stacks of them. Back when you could put 99 megabytes on one disk. Wow, it was amazing. It was before my time, but the ad agency I worked at had SciQuest. And I think the big thing with those was they held like 40 something megabytes. It was ridiculous. Details, details. So let's go thirty. Well, we're Getting down to just the final details here, I think. Try to make this gun look cool. It's funny thinking about all that old tech. I think about, I had to take out a loan to get my first Mac and it was like a 700 megabyte hard drive. Like maybe, maybe two megs of video RAM and 16 megs of regular RAM. And that was like a ton back then. 15 inch monitor. Let me tell you how much easier it is to do all this digital art now that we've got flat screens instead of CRTs, man. You, your eyes would just feel like you had sand in them at the end of the day working on those. I'm staring at those screens. From age 18 until I think 2000, the year 2000 is when the first flat screen Max came out my eyeglass prescription doubled every year. And then once, uh, it was a PowerMax 7100, 7180 AV, the audio visual version, it could do audio and visual. Um, once the flat screens came out, my, my prescription for my glasses stayed the same for like a decade, so it tells you how bad those CRTs really were for our eyes, horrible especially when you're sitting at the desk, you know, 18 hours a day, staring at it. All right, Evan, if you see anything you don't like or have any requests, now is the time to speak up, my friend, because this thing is just about done, I think. I'm not seeing anything jump out at me that I don't like, per se. Did I use Photoshop when there were no layers? Yes. I colored many a comic when there were no layers. That's why I know so much about channels. And I colored many a comic with a mouse and I colored many a comic when there was only one level of undo in Photoshop. Let me tell you what a pain in the butt that was. Yeah, I, I, did, I did this line. Do you see any others that I missed? touched up that line. I'm going to do the shading on these before I forget. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, one level of undo was insane. And, you know, and it would take, I don't know, 10 minutes to save or open a page. And you just pray that it didn't crash the whole time. And it's back when Photoshop, you know, cost like a thousand dollars or fourteen hundred dollars or something. It was insane. Uh, I think we're done with this one. At least very close. I wish these markers had like the value on the cap instead of just the name. It's kind of silly. You should just say 10, 20, 30, 40. Thank you, Evan. Uh, all right. I think it's golden. If I find anything after the fact, I'll touch it up, but I think we're good to go here. So all this one needs is a signature. Perfect. All right, well, anybody who wants to hang out, I'm gonna do a real quick Pokemon cooldown sketch. Uh, this was the main one for today, so let me get it out of the way and we'll start the next one. Well, there you go, you can see it in all of its glory. Here we go, Hera from Star Wars Rebels. And let's do a Pokemon as our cooldown. This one should be fun and fast. Oh, thanks for watching, Tracy. I appreciate it. And thank you too, Evan. I appreciate it. These are fun to do, and having you guys here watch me forces me to just sit and do it all at one time and not take a million breaks and walk away and all that. So it's good for me too. And I appreciate the company. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, so this Pokemon, this will be a fast one. This will be our cooldown sketch today. So uh, the the person yesterday who had the, the Ash with Pikachu, they wanted Ash with Charizard. So I thought this would be a fun fun way to do it. Um, this one will be it should be it should be quick. It'll be fun. So just get in here and start working on it. Now Christy, she's the Pokemon master. She she knows all the Pokemon. I just know like the main ones. Like even in D Detective Pikachu, there were tons. I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, say it to her face, I dare you. <laughs> 